Mr. Quinn, are you ready? Uh, please, call me Memmi. Uh, yes, I'm ready. Hi, this is Victor Perez. I wanted to share with you this experience that I have uh, creating The Third Person, which is a short film I directed and I created, I mean, I did everything. Um, it was uh, produced everything in Unreal Engine. I think it is important that I tell you about The Third Person because usually when you watch the backstage of every film, everybody says how amazing it was, how, good everybody was and I want to share this with you because I learned so many things beyond the engine. And let me be clear up front, that was my very first experience creating an animated short film in Unreal Engine or any other method ever existed. I never attempted to do animation piece. It's something that I always loved because you have the freedom to create anything so there are two limits. One is the most important, which is your imagination. The other limit is the software and the hardware. So I want to mix everything just to tell you my experience working in this particular short film. Well, in 2022, I was so lucky to participate in the Unreal Fellowship, which is an amazing intensive course that Epic Games just create to make people aware of Unreal Engine capabilities. And this one was special because it was focused on storytelling. In there, I met a lot of people and people coming from many different backgrounds. And I have to admit that I was even intimidated because everybody in there was super skilled in many, many different aspects. So when I started working on the Unreal Fellowship, the first thing that I noticed was that the rhythm of the class was really, really intense. I think I never understood properly the word intensive course until I started doing the Unreal uh, Fellowship. It was something like eight, nine hours of lectures and practicing and exercising and tutoring and it was really a lot from the morning to the evening and it was like a worldwide experience. The intensive part got really difficult when you need to find time to create your piece because that is one of the requisites of the course that by the end of the course you must create a piece of animation. It was like three minutes. So in the beginning, when they explained to you, I was like, yeah, very confident. Yeah, of course, three minutes. It's only three minutes. <laughs> you know, everybody can do three minutes. I was very wrong. Well, actually, I wasn't. But in the sense that I was thinking, so I was thinking to create something completely beyond my possibilities. I was just hoping just to get uh, all the information that I need to become the best and real engine artist ever existed in the world in five weeks. But in the experience, I was actually learning. And the more I learn, the more I understand that I need to exercise more and practice more. While other, other people was having th their own experience at the service of the short film, in my case, the 2D side wasn't of much help. Even my storytelling, uh, I was a bit frustrated in the beginning because I didn't know how to put my knowledge together in order to tell a story. So I was so focused on the technology that I forgot the most important part, which is why we are here, why we decide to have this job. I forgot to have fun. It is really amazing how sometimes the sense of survival that we have as an artist is what is going to rescue us. That is why I believe a deadline is actually the healthiest thing that an artist can have. My tutor, Erika, she was amazing because she was trying to guide me into, you know, less is more, try to focus on the important part, try to focus on the story. And I was so focused on the technology, the how to do crazy things, things that have been never 
done before and attempted until one day this happened. I just realized that everybody was just trying to get their own background into their short film and I was just trying to strive for perfection. Perfection is something that sometimes can help but sometimes can just block you because you want to create a piece that is perfect, that is what they, what you meant as an artist to be and you just want that idea that is in your head perfectly transferred into the screen and that is you know it's omitting the most important part which is the input that you are getting when you are working so instead of working against the machine you actually work with the machine you embrace your limitations and then you use your limitations that is what happens i believe pixar in the beginning I guess, like in the 90s, we have the problem that all the renders that we, I mean, that they created, because that was in the very, very, very early days, even in the 80s. In the beginning, renders were looking like plastic. So in that time, you have two ways. You can just keep researching and try to get skin, something that looked like skin, or you can just play along and if everything looks like plastic you can create a story with plastic and what if you do both at the same time so that is why i believe pixar and Eileen and all the you know amazing artists and technicians engineers that that are working constantly to strike for perfection that is why i admire them but if we don't put the context of the storytelling we are always going to be chasing for perfection as a child is chasing the rainbow. So you will never get it because perfection doesn't exist. That's why I consider the third person a failure success story. Because at a certain point, that was the last week, I just realized that the short film that I wanted to create was too much for the given time, for the resources, and too much for me just to handle everything while enjoying the benefits of the course that I was taking. So I switch off the stripe for perfection and I started enjoying. I started having fun. And then I was thinking about Pixar. You know, everything looks like plastic. Let's make a movie about plastic characters. I guess Toy Story is really nice because they use their limitations as points of strength. At that point, I was a week away to finish the short film. Everybody was having their first dailies. And me, I was just very worried, very stressed, trying to figure out things. You know, I knew already how to use a bit of the engine. But of course, I was alone and I was having only my free time after nine hours of lectures. So I was like, my brain was melt. But it was at that very moment that my tutor said, you know, just produce something. Because if you don't produce something, you're not going to graduate. And it's like, oh my God, I need to create something that need that real need to create something, that's what forced me to do, let's do something, something that you can do, something that is going to, to use your, your own resources. I was thinking about the theme of Pixar, this example, and I said, okay, well, what do I have in, in, in here in Unreal that I can use without needing to, to go into a 3D package to generate something crazy or to buy complex stuff? So what did Pixar in that time? So what if toys had feelings? And then it's like, okay, let's see another model. Cars. What if cars had feelings? So this thing of putting feelings into elements that usually have no feelings. Until I got to, what if feelings have feelings inside out? So I like the trend to give life to something, to give a soul that is actually animation, is to put a soul in something that doesn't have a soul. 
So I thought, well, I have a background as an actor, so maybe I can use my own voice and play on the performance of the voice and then give a soul to an element that is the mannequin, money as they call it. So I thought, well, what if the mannequin feelings? So what if money was actually like a, an actor? And that just unlocked my creativity. So I had five days left. That was on, on Monday. And I had my meeting, my weekly meeting with my tutor. And I told her, you know, Erika, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm just going to try this because I think I have the structure in my head. On Tuesday, I have already everything blocked. I recorded my, my voice just with the iPhone, editing a bit with uh, DaVinci Resolve, uh, that by the way is free as well as Unreal Engine. I wanted to do something that anybody can do. So I didn't want to get like the craziest technology on something that is inaccessible. And I can demonstrate that at the end of the day, technology, even if it's important, is way less important than the artist. So that's why I wanted to focus on storytelling, because that was the purpose of the course. So I'm going to tell a story with the minimum, the bare minimum elements that I have. That's why I used the basic space for, for creating games in the, in the game engine, and I used you know, the default character, money. So I put my voice to, to money. Then I was playing with that. What if money had feelings and he wanted to tell his story? So I was getting like a set, like a, you know, a backdrop and the cameras, the tripods, anything like, like I have in here for this interview. I have a bit of experience with interviews. So I said, okay, I'm just going to have the interview of this guy. So I got an artificial intelligence voice that I just type in and it creates the voice of the interviewer that was coming together very, very neat. So I was having the same pipeline as any animation. I created my audio, I was getting my references and the nice thing that the, the, the mannequin has no expression. So you put in your mind the face to, to him. I believe in filmmaking, it's not about giving everything, showing everything. It's more important what you don't show than what you show. So the film for me is like a pact between what is in the screen and the person that is watching. So it's me with the spectator, the audience, having a pact. So that is the principle. So I was applying like filmmaking because I have experience in, in, in filmmaking and applying all this principle of editing. I wanted to make like a documentary or mockumentary of that experience, like retro uh, look. And at the same time to look like the camera is real. For me, the most important element for, for filmmaking is actually the point of view. So the camera, I wanted to have that feeling that there is someone behind the camera. That, that was the trick, just to make you believe that asset is real. So by Tuesday, I have my blocking of the whole thing. By Wednesday, I was starting finishing shots. By Thursday, I have the first version. And by Friday, the short film was complete. And let me remind you that I said, it's not just working on the short film. I was working on the free time available after the lectures. You know, I was counting the hours that I put into the project and the project, the final product that you can, that you can watch that is online for free is 35 hours. That is the most amazing filmmaking experience that I ever had. From this short film, I learned maybe the most important lesson that I ever had in filmmaking which is don't forget to have fun. So this is the most important part. I didn't have time to focus on technology. I didn't have time to focus on other things of the software, anything that I needed, and just specific to what I needed, not anything just maybe in case, no, 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 I need that, I get that. It was so amazing that the moment you press render, it was rendering in real time. It took three minutes and a half to render three minutes and a half. I wanted to have to mix now like the real camera elements. I was playing with 
shutter speeds and then samples and motion blur um, you know the depth of field so i was building the camera in the 3d so when you were looking at the footage there was a moment that i even forgot that i was playing in animation and it was so immediate because when you want to change something and you are editing i was editing inside the engine by the way when you put something together how many times as a filmmaker you thought um i should have done this in this other way well it happens in here as well so what do you do well you do it in the other way because you can do it you can always go back this is the experience after that I had another regard for animation. And of course, I see that in the future, maybe we are going to be creating stories in real time. Something that I get from this experience is that this is not what I had in mind. It's just much better because I was listening to the piece. So instead of being a dictator of my own story, I was telling the story while I was creating. So I was editing in Unreal and telling the story in Unreal while the story was being told by itself. That experience that needed four weeks of struggling to get one great week of final result, that is maybe the most important lesson that I learned from that Unreal Fellowship. If you are telling a story, never forget but the most important element is always the story. In my case also, I was very lucky because I was using a very good computer. So the computer was uh, an Asus ProArt. It has like a amazing NVIDIA graphics card. So that's practically all you need to create something like a pro. Even if you have like a setup of video games, you know, Unreal Engine is based on game engine. So the video game computers are actually fit for the job. I prefer the Pro R because they are made also for a wider task that I'm going to need. And don't forget that I need precision. So that is the that, that is why the Pro R environment is going to offer like monitors and any other element of hardware. When I was working on the piece, I never thought about the hardware. So I thought about the hardware once when I put it on the desk. For the rest, I just don't have time to care about hardware. I just want the machine to work. We don't care about machines until they break. Well, for me, I just press the start button. That's all I need. So. Yeah, this is my experience with the Unreal Fellowship. I hope that this experience that I share just brings something for, for you. Um, thanks for watching. See you in the movies. Thank you for your time, Mr. Quinn. Thank you. And please, call me money.